Watch the series finale of X-Men next Saturday morning. Check your local listings. I'm grateful to have the chance to say goodbye. I am proud of you all, my X-Men. Fate lies in our hands now. 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 We have to stay vigilant. The Professor entrusted us with his dream. No matter how dark it is, we must believe in each other. We get this done by working together as a team. Jeez, Bob, keep buzzing in my ear. To me, my X-Men. Magneto. The last will and testament of Charles Xavier. Everything he built now belongs to me. Welcome back, everyone. It's Charlie. Marvel just released the X-Men 97 trailer. There's a whole bunch of Easter eggs and references here to the original X-Men, the animated series, so we'll break it all down. But it definitely seems like the MCU is winning this week, at least. Like, there's a lot of Marvel stuff coming out this week. We do have Madam Web. That was not so hot. But if we're just talking about the MCU Marvel stuff, they're actually doing pretty solid this week. I think based on the strength of the response to Deadpool and Wolverine, it literally broke all of Marvel's trailer records so far. Cannot wait to hear Deadpool brag about that to Spider-Man when we get to Secret Wars and they're actually on screen together. But part of the idea this year is that Marvel wants to use X-Men the Animated Series to get people ready for mutants back in the MCU again before Deadpool 3, Deadpool and Wolverine hits theaters in July. So X-Men 97 is meant to be like the appetizer for mutants again in a really, really big way. If you're brand new to the channel, be sure to subscribe to get all the episodes. I will be doing regular episode videos just like I do for all the other big Marvel series. As they say in the trailer, this is going to be dropping March 20th, so we don't have to wait that long. We'll probably get a couple more trailers before it comes to. There are a couple minor changes, like a couple of the voice actors that they've swapped out since the original series, either because people have passed away or for creative reasons, because just like the original episodes, they're going to have a bit of a time travel plot where you have characters from the future and things from the future being referenced in the past. Like they literally referenced the Days of Future Past arc from the original series during this with the VHS tapes. And for instance, Cable, Bishop, who are from the future, they will come back too. But basically the idea is that X-Men 97 is just like the next season of X-Men the Animated Series, which is why they begin the actual trailer in that real life kind of way with someone actually watching the real life X-Men the Animated Series on a CRT TV with a really 90s looking living room setup. This is because the original X-Men the Animated Series ended in 1997, and that's when season six would have also started too later in that year, which is why the series is called X-Men 97, because it's just a continuation of the original series with shinier HD animation. They do use one of the classic bumpers like Cyclops saying next time on X-Men or watch the series finale of X-Men the Animated Series. I'm surprised though they didn't actually end the trailer with next time on X-Men. Previously on X-Men. A lot of these are all tropes of television that aired on broadcast TV. So if you've never actually watched TV shows on broadcast TV, like you were only born during the streaming age of TV and you're like a really young person right now, this might seem a little bit weird to you, some of these tropes. But the framed animated picture of Cyclops and Jean Grey on the left, this is actually the real picture from the actual series episodes of the Wolverine meme. If you've only ever seen the Wolverine meme with other pictures that he's touching here, this is the picture that he was touching in the original episode of Jean Grey. They're even selling brand new merchandise of him doing the meme. The action figure on the right was a real life action figure sold for the series back in the day for the Colossus character. Like you could actually go out in stores and buy this. Now you can actually buy it on eBay. But what Marvel has done though, is they started re-releasing all the X-Men 97 versions of all this merchandise through their black label line. 
I literally just bought a Magneto helmet based on the original animated series, but this is like a brand new piece of merchandise that they started selling based on the series. So there is a lot of X-Men 97 related merchandise you could go out and buy right now. Notice on top of the TV they have the VHS tape recordings because if you didn't ever use VHS tapes or you were born after DVD took off back in the day there was no real DVR or online streaming where you could rewind stuff or watch stuff on demand whenever you felt like it. So the only way to actually rewatch shows and movies was if a TV station actually aired them physically again in their lineup later in the week or if you recorded them using a VCR on VHS tapes and those were actually super expensive back in the 90s. They were about on par with the cost of like 4K Blu-rays. So the idea with the beginning of the promo here like the intro is that a person in real life was meant to have recorded these X-Men episodes. These three were all real life episode arcs from the original series. There was the Christmas special here which it says on the tape. The one for the original X-Men cartoon was just the original X-Men the animated series regular episodes and the other one with the really small print is for X-Men DOFP Days of Future Past which was an arc of the original animated series. That arc was also a little more faithful to the original comic book Days of Future Past arc than the live action movie was. They actually did a lot of the seminal X-Men comic book arcs during X-Men the animated series. During the actual trailer there were a lot of super deep cut easter eggs and references some of you spotted. Notice when the TV plays the promo for the original season 5 finale of the original animated series it's actually the new voice of the Cyclops character. It's a different person voicing a couple of the characters. The TV says Saturday check your local listings. That's originally how TV used to air and the original TV show did air on Saturday mornings for a while but they tended to change when stuff aired throughout the broadcast. It's mostly meant to be a reference to the original idea of Saturday morning cartoons which kind of died during the 90s like Saturday morning cartoons weren't really a thing during the 2000s. There's like a whole separate video that I could do about why Saturday morning cartoons were killed off by Congress basically. Essentially it amounts to a lot of the rules about how you advertise stuff to children. They start by showing a scene from the original season 5 finale just to kind of remind people how they ended the original series. A lot of complaints that you could levy about the way they changed the animation style from season 4 to season 5. I still have questions about this. It's mostly for a cost basis reason. Generally X-Men the animated series and the original Spider-Man animated series from the 90s were both animated by Japanese studios though. Technically that does not make them anime though because they were animated in a western looking style by Japanese studios. If you haven't seen them too there's Japanese unique versions of the X-Men the animated series intros and they both slap really hard. <laughs> then the TV transitions to the present day X-Men 97 episodes that we'll be watching in a couple weeks. They start playing the brand new version of the original X-Men the animated series theme, probably one of the best theme songs that Marvel has ever done. And notice when they intro the new Marvel Studios banner it actually says Marvel Animation. That's like a brand new sub brand that they're rolling out kind of like the Marvel Spotlight brand too. All meant to be spin offs of the original Marvel Studios brand. I think part of the idea is that a lot of the brand new animated series that Marvel releases in the next couple of years will all be under this Marvel Animation brand. Some of you probably remember that they've actually used the X-Men the Animated Series theme song in the live action MCU movies the last couple of years. There's been two instances. The first time was during Doctor Strange Multiverse of Madness when Patrick Stewart came back as live action Professor X meant to be based on a version from X-Men the Animated Series like he was using the same yellow floaty chair. The other time was during the Miss Marvel series when they revealed that she was a mutant not an inhuman. Maybe if we're lucky they'll also use the animated series theme song a little bit during Deadpool and Wolverine. Maybe there'll be some references to them during that too. The logo transitions from the original CRT scan lines to the nice shiny HD version. This is meant to be a scene of New York City. I believe it's meant to be from the future which is another reference to that Days of Future Past story arc from the original series. The other story arc from the original series that featured a very post apocalyptic future was the Age of Apocalypse story arc. Look in the background it looks like some of the Morlocks being yoinked back into the alleyway. Here's a really big Spider-Man easter egg here too. This paper references the Daily Bugle, both Spider-Man and Venom and it's the versions from Spider-Man the 90s animated series. 
That's because that show was made for the original programming block when X-Men the Animated Series episodes also aired, so they were like these two shows that were made by the same studio that aired around the same time. So of course if you're referencing the future of that universe, it'd be those versions of Spider-Man and Venom. They reference the Hellfire Gala, which is a reference to the Hellfire Club, also big thing in the comics. The reference here on the left to is Spider-Man a mutant is also a real life question that fans asked for a long time. Spider-Man himself is not a mutant, he's a mutate. The difference between mutates and mutants is that you have to be born with your powers, you don't get mutated later in life and then get them. So like the Hulk for instance is also a mutate. In order to be a mutant you have to be born with the X gene and have your powers at birth. We get new voiceover from that new version of Cyclops talking about how the professor entrusted them with his dream and it's the aftermath of his leaving the earth basically. But it seems like they're treating him as if he died during the trailer. That might just be for show on planet earth for the other people who wanted him dead. I believe at some point later in season 1 or at some point during season 2, Professor X will come back. He went to the Shi'ar Empire with Lalandra who was going to heal him using their technology. So even though it makes it seem like he's dead during this, I think that's meant to be a misdirect. This scene of the protest is meant to be at the United Nations as part of that other scene with Magneto addressing the United Nations in his brand new suit from the comics. All these anti-mutant signs that you see is stuff that they referenced during the original animated series. Like in the background there's a sign for FOH which is Friends of Humanity, an organization that was led by Graydon Creed Jr., the son of Sabretooth in Mystique who was not a mutant but hated mutants. The last time we saw him was when Sabretooth was confronting him saying come to daddy in like a really evil kind of way like he was gonna do something really bad to him. This looks like the military assaulting the X-Mansion. We get voiceover from Storm and it is the original version of Storm who's come back. Most of the actors that voice the original versions of the characters have come back. Just a couple of them have been recast for practical reasons. Either because they needed to be recast or they wanted like a slightly younger version of the voice in Cyclops case because we're going to see Cable and he's meant to be older than Cyclops when he actually shows up. There's a brief flash of a hand from one of the Sentinels. We get a wider shot of the X mansion and I'm not sure where this temple is with the bird but I think the statues of Magneto and Professor X are meant to be a reference to Genosha so I think this is meant to be like a more developed version of Genosha. I'm not sure who the green bird character is meant to be though. Notice in the background you started getting the crescendo of the X-Men the animated series theme song but it's a slightly different new version of the song. We get the current version of the X-Men team getting ready to head out in the X-Jet all doing their suit up montage. Speaking of suit up montages, it feels like Deadpool in live action now, like in the Deadpool and Wolverine trailer, now has the best suit up montage, at least in live action. As you can see, the current version when episodes begin of this team is Beast, Cyclops, Storm, Wolverine. This is morphed behind Wolverine because he's kind of been rehabilitated a little bit since after breaking away from Mr. Sinister. Gambit to his right, Rogue behind him, and then Bishop in the far back left. I believe that Jubilee is also meant to be on the team too, like you see her in the big lineup later in the trailer, but I think right now this is meant to be the adult version of the team, so maybe Jubilee is still viewed as like a little kid and doesn't go out on all the missions yet. We get a lot of classic lines that they say during the trailer like Wolverine telling Cyclops bub. We get a cool montage of all their powers, but it's an HD version of animation like this new style of animation that they're using for the show. This might be a version of the Hellfire Gala happening on Genosha, like this big celebration might be the actual Hellfire Gala. Jubilee comes back, it looks like they're in the middle of a mission, this person on the right of her is just morph again. This is Jean Grey who is very pregnant with a tiny baby Cable, there'll be a big reference to this during the Mr. Sinister storyline during the season, he's meant to be the main villain of season 1. They started to get into Mr. Sinister arcs in the last couple of seasons of X-Men the Animated Series. The whole idea is that he's obsessed with the bloodline of Cyclops and Jean Grey expecting some kind of super omega level mutant to come from them, but we know that Cable and eventually Hope come from them. But also I believe that Madeline Pryor, who was created by Mr. Sinister, is supposed to appear during season 1. If you've not read the X-Men comics, you're not familiar with those story arcs, you are not ready for Madeline Pryor. She's like another evil clone of Jean Grey, so it's gonna be nuts. This scene of everybody fighting all the different Sentinels might actually be from the Danger Room. I think there are gonna be a couple of Danger Room episodes during the new series. We get a couple of new combos of them using their powers together. This time it's Gambit riding Wolverine like an ostrich, charging up his claws using his powers. 
Imagine seeing something like this in live action now that they have the special effects, like the visual effects technology to pull something like this off in live action. And we get the classic line from the comics, which is a Professor X line that he usually says from Cyclops, to me, my X-Men. They end the trailer with a version of the original animated theme song with a new version of the logo that's meant to look kind of like the way they ended the original intros. This time just a little bit shinier now just because of the modern technology. And obviously the other minor change is the X-Jet flies across it and you have the Marvel animation logo instead of just Marvel. Then we get a post credit scene during the actual trailer and it's Magneto coming back to the X-Mansion showing them the last will and testament of Charles Xavier Professor X, basically the idea that he was giving everything to Magneto in hoping to redeem Magneto or help him find redemption by leading the X-Men in Professor X's place. So part of the idea when episodes begin is that Magneto shows up and starts leading the X-Men, even though Cyclops and Storm are kind of like the main team leaders, you have to sort of think of Magneto as filling the role that Professor X used to fill. So even though during his scene, he sounds a little sinister, like I'm coming to take everything that belonged to Professor X, technically he's meant to be a good character during season one. Like I said, the main villain is supposed to be Mr. Sinister. But there's so much stuff going on during this trailer, like so many references to the original series. Like I said, also references to the original Spider-Man, the animated series from the 90s. So we'll probably see those characters. Deadpool was also canon to X-Men, the animated series. So it is totally possible that Deadpool also shows up at some point during the series too. If there's any Easter eggs or references that you spotted that I didn't talk about in this video, just write them below in the comments and we will get more trailers in the next couple of weeks. So of course I'll do more videos as we get them. The MCU doing pretty, pretty good this week. There are a couple other Super Bowl trailers that I'm still working on. I'll try to do videos for everything. We just got the trailer for Invincible Season 2 Part 2. It features all the rest of the episodes this season, so I'll try to get my video for that up either later tonight or early tomorrow morning. Then that new Godzilla and Kong trailer video too. So a lot of really, really big stuff happening this week. Click here and here for my brand new Deadpool and Wolverine trailer videos. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one.